Good afternoon, and welcome to the Auctioner Health Respiratory Therapy Talent Talk. My name is Dave Trepanier, and I'm a career outreach specialist for Auctioner Health. And joining today are various representatives from our respiratory therapy team. Uh, today's discussion is going to touch on a variety of topics, but first I'd like to give everybody the opportunity to introduce themselves. And Jackie, would you like to get us started? Yes. Um, thank you, David, for having my, my team and I on this webinar. We're excited about it um, and so happy that we could share our experiences. I'm Jackie Odom. I'm the uh, Director of Respiratory Therapy here at Oshner Main Campus, the Post-Acute Care Center, and also the Elmwood Orthopedic Surgeon uh, Surgery Clinic, or I guess Surgery Center. Um, I've been in Oshner for almost seven years now. I've been a respiratory therapist for almost 30 years. Um, and I have the, the blessing of leading an amazing team in which some of them you're going to get to meet today. Great. Thank you, Jackie. Jonah, would you like to go next? Yes, my name is Jonah Wood. Um, I've been working here as a respiratory therapist for about two years. Um, I graduated from the Pearl River Community College uh, program in 2018. Great. And Valerie? Valerie Kurtz. Um, I've been working here about five, six years, right out of school. Work everywhere, all over the hospital. All right. And Jessica, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody as well? Hey, my name is Jessica Pittman. I've been at Auctioner for a year now. I graduated last December from Pearl River Community College in Hattiesburg. All right. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to meet with us today. I know that everybody on this discussion is actually on shift, so y'all had to come off to to speak with us, so we really do appreciate you taking the time. To get us going into the conversation today, I think, Jackie, it'd be great for you to start us off uh, and sharing some insight into a little bit deeper into the scope of your leadership and how your teams are structured. Yeah, so I have um, um, about 120 to 140 RTs given the day, I guess. We have on shift, we have anywhere from 25 to 30. Um, I have uh, myself, who's the director, and I re report up to an amazing ABP who's a nurse. She's been here at Austin for 30 years. Um, underneath me, and I don't say underneath, with me, is um, my manager, Terry Nelson. And then we have nine supervisors, those that are spread throughout days and nights, and then pediatrics and adults. Um, and then uh, beyond that, we have a couple of team leaders every shift. And then every one of us are leaders um, indirectly. Um, that's how our team is structured. We have um, about almost 700 beds. We have about five ICUs right now. Um, we have one PICU, so it's really nice to have both the peds and the adults here. Um, we do not have NICU on our campus, but NICU is about three miles down the road. And if the uh, NICU babies have to have any type of surgery, we will get micro preemies in the NICU. So we, I mean, in PICU, so we do actually get to see that population of patients. Um, we have uh, a very high, uh, high acuity um, patient population here. We have um, typically our patients that are on our med surge or step down units would be those patients that would be in a smaller facility's ICU. And so our ICU patients are shipped, a lot of ours are, a lot of our patients are shipped to us from our smaller facilities. Um, we are the largest facility um, at Oshner Health and uh, including, not including LSU Health, because LSU Health is also a very large one. But we do have a lot of patients and um, we, um, that we have about four to five ICU pay RTs on each ICU. So that's how it is, that's how we're structured. Great, Jackie, thank you for sharing with us there. And now, just to continue on, Jonah, you've been with Optioner Health for a few years now. You think you could share uh, with the audience a little bit of insight on your experience and the increase in, in roles and different assignments that you've had throughout your time? Right, so I came to Oshner straight out of school at PRCC and um, immediately it was just hit the ground running. Um, I always say the best thing about our department, about what we're running here is the fact that we will get you in respiratory anywhere you wanna go and even beyond that if needed. So I came in, 
I immediately said, I want to do the floors. I want to go to the ICU. I want to go to the ER. I want to do everything. And within a couple of months, I'd actually come through everything we had to do. So we progress you through the floors, make sure your assessment skills are fine, make sure you're ready to go, um, let you last on your own for a little while. Then if you're ready, we escalate you to the ICUs and you get to orient through all the ICUs, see how things are done. From there, we'll ask, do you wanna do the emergency room? Do you wanna go through uh, PI, which is our pediatric ICU? Where you wanna go from there? And anything you want, anything you wanna do, we'll get you there. And then from there we say, okay, you've established yourself here. Would you like to be part of our team leaders um, in which you help others do the same thing? And then from there also, we go on to rapid response and other opportunities such as that, so. Great, Jonah, thank you for sharing on that. Uh, Valerie, Jonah kind of touched a little bit on his training process a little bit in the different areas. Do you think you could give a little bit more insight into the respiratory therapy training process and timeline for someone that may be interested in oxygen health? Sure. So kind of like Jonah just said, um, with pretty much a 12-week program, we do several weeks on just the regular med surge. And then we have three regular adult ICUs. We do each one of those. Um, we have COVID ICUs that you can also train in. And then we also have the pediatric ICU. Um, pediatrics is more of a specialty, so not everyone trains in that. It's, it's if you're interested, you know, and you want to take that pathway into there, we train in there. But you can definitely be trained in the entire hospital within, you know, a good six months. Great, Valerie. And one of the things I know we've discussed before is the, the scheduling and overtime advantages with Oxford Health. What is the uh, advantages there? Yeah, so it's really nice because we have so many patients to take care of. There's definitely opportunities to work overtime. Um, once you pick up a shift, it's yours. You're not going to be sent home. Um, and even with that training process, you can pick up to try to, you know, just improve your assessment skills and get trained in one area, you know, not quicker, but if you're here more, you're going to have, you know, more days in that area so you can be more proficient. And um, they kind of work with you with where you want to be and, and how much you want to work. Great, Valerie, thank you for that. Now, Jessica, you are one of the newer members of the team and uh, Valerie's given us some great insight on the training. You think you could let us know how your transition has been from the training program in school and now moving into the professional environment into the workforce? How's your experience with Oxford Health been? It's honestly, it's been great. I know that when you're in school, you're scared when you get out, you don't really know what to expect. You hear all kinds of things and now you're on your own. You don't really have beside your preceptors, anyone behind you. And I have to say that when, from the day that I walked in, I was greeted with open arms and everyone's so helpful. They make sure that we know what we need to know to get where we want to go. And I just have to tell anyone, especially new students, that if whatever you want, just put your mind to it and you can do it. As Jonah stated, you know, we come in and I was the same way as him. I wanted to go straight in. I wanted to get the floors. I wanted to learn in the ICU and go to the ER and rapid response. And a year in, I've, I do everything. I work in the, e, the ER, rapid response, floors, all the ICUs, and it's definitely a rewarding career and opportunity. Great, Jessica. Thank you so much for sharing on that, and I'm glad that your first year with Oxford Health has been a good experience. Now, Jonah, you also kind of had a big transition when starting with Oxford Health. You made a big move from out of state and moving to the New Orleans area. What would be some of your advice to someone that may be looking at being the same situation moving from a smaller area into the New Orleans area? Right. So I grew up in a very small town. Um, definitely anything bigger than a couple of thousand people is a culture shock for me. Uh, but coming into the general New Orleans area, Louisiana culture, um, the whole culture is very accepting. So 
Uh, I actually don't live in New Orleans. I live on the North Shore, which is smaller, still bigger than anything I'm used to, but it's definitely um, a smaller community. Um, the commute in is not that bad. Uh, you just drive across the causeway. Um, it really doesn't really make a difference to me personally. Um, but the fact of the matter was that uh, other places that I've been to across the country, uh, it feels like whenever you go into these big cities, everyone's wondering, how are you going to fit in? How are you going to become one of us? Um, whereas New Orleans culture, it's just more along the lines of, hey, just come be with us. Come just be here and we'll accept you as you are. So um, Oshner has been very accepting. And I've seen this not with just my life, but everyone else is very accepting of all different types of culture and people. Um, as long as you're willing to commit to the things we value most, which is a patient's first mindset, then everything should be squared away with you being here. Yeah, Jonah, and thank you for sharing that. I know I'm a little biased. I'm a, I'm a New Orleans native, and I know I love the city, but I always like to hear such great things from someone that may not have grown up in the, in the metropolitan area. So thanks for that. Now, Jessica, moving it back to you again. Uh, from what I understand, today is your first day soloing with the Rapid Response Team, so congratulations on that. But Thank you. How your, absolutely. How is your training and orientation into Rapids and other areas of uh, respiratory therapy gone for you, uh, kind of done in that process most recently out of this panel? It's actually been a very smooth process. The nurses that we get to work beside, the physicians, were all hand in hand and it's a very good teamwork, and that's what I value the most about it. And it's not just work family where we are family. And I like that mindset that we have. I like that when we go into serious situations, regardless if I'm working in the ER, um, ICU, or on rapids, we all work together, and we don't make the situation worse than what it could be. And that's a, a wonderful thing. Absolutely. And... Is there a specific situation from your training that you'd like to share with everybody or a certain story? Yeah, we've, I mean, today, actually, we've had where we had to take a patient back to the ED and it's, it was very, not a good situation and it could have went bad fast. And I have to say that my team members, along with the nurses and the physicians, everything went so smoothly to putting them on a stretcher to people not know, not having to do things like that before. But I can promise if you would have looked at the situation from the outside, you would have never known that anyone did not know or have never had to do some of the things before because we try to make everything less stressful for the patient and for everyone around you. And to me, that's, that's what teamwork's about. We're all supposed to work together and make things easier for each other. Absolutely, Jessica. Thank you for sharing. I think that's a great testament to the training and the orienting that we've talked so much about. And, and Jonah, I think we had kind of, in some of our previous discussions, had talked about maybe a story or a situation you had in the rapid, with the rapid response team you wanted to share, too. Right. And, uh, you know, speaking on what you were saying about the training and stuff like that, um, we've always known that Jessica would be a great fit into our rapid response team um, because we always like to make sure that you are absolutely ready to go wherever you want. So um, the training is definitely there. We started on the floors and here she is now. Um, as far as my rapid response experience, uh, both me and Valerie are also on the rapid response team. And um, I think the best testament to what we do is that one day I got a call from the parking garage um, right here in the main atrium of Oshner where they said rapid response. So I got down there and we found a four-year-old who had had what we suspected to be a heat stroke. So we immediately went into our mode of how do we fix this? How do we solve this? Me and a rapid response nurse. Turns out he stopped breathing, his heart stopped. So we immediately had to start doing compressions, getting oxygen on him, all these things. And then once the um, team staff, the doctor showed up, we decided let's get him to the emergency room. So I took the child and I put him into the rapid response nurse's arms, got her in a wheelchair, and we just sprinted to the emergency room. Once he was there, um, usually it's a custom that rapid response nurses leave and allow the ED nurses to stay uh, I'm in to take over. Um, my 
emergency room therapist looked at me and said, will you stay and help me? So I stayed, we intubated the child. Turns out two days later, he went home just fine. Um, just had a minor heat stroke and just stopped breathing for a second. But I think that speaks to the value of our team and what we promote here is to be a well-rounded therapist in all areas. Um, I was trained in PICU long before I was a rapid response therapist. So my experience in PICU not only helped give me better assessment skills, but also made me more comfortable with that culture, uh, a patient population to where I was not in any way out of sorts to be dealing with a four-year-old versus a 40-year-old. So all that goes in and we always look at that when we're evaluating, maybe we have a new person that we'd like to escalate to rapid response or say, hey, do you want to be a rapid response therapist? Is we say, hey, are you well-rounded? And the beauty of where we work is you always have an opportunity to be well-rounded. Great, Jonah, and uh, I appreciate your uh, personal story there. I've seen the rapid response uh, team in action, not personally on me, but seen it happen, and I know that it's a, it's a great feat to watch. I'll do a really, really great job. Now, Valerie, to kind of transition over to you a little bit out of the training, but more of the response of respiratory therapists, especially considering the COVID-19 pandemic, how has the scope of your work been affected and what has been the response from the respiratory therapist at Auctioner? Thanks for definitely more, <clears throat> I don't wanna say needed, but just acknowledge to what, you know, we do on a daily basis. Um, we definitely have altered some of the ways we work with assessments and how often and, you know, what we're looking for, COVID specific, specific disease process that we definitely have all learned together how to treat it and what to look for and what's important and what's not important. Um, we do have a very sick patient population here. So I always tell people when I'm training them assessment, 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 it's so important and it's definitely driven here. It's definitely something that's important in our, you know, detail to assessment, not just doing the work, but knowing why you're doing the work and we have protocols for everything. And that's really, really it. <laughs> Great, Valerie. Thank you so much. I know that it's really, it's almost an understatement to say an unprecedented time and that our entire healthcare frontline has had to adapt. But I know that respiratory therapists being the nature of this disease have had a lot of uh, response and pressure. And part of the reason that patients that get to go home do is the work that you are doing. So we really, really do appreciate it. Now, Jackie, you know, we kind of saved you to open us up and close us out a little bit. Uh, so I think it'd be good for, for you and I to have a little bit of discussion as a hiring leader and a hiring manager on for respiratory therapists. What are some of the professional qualities that uh, you're kind of looking for in an applicant for respiratory therapy? Oh, David. Well, first off, I just have to say thank you to this amazing team. It's probably good that you couldn't see me wiping away some of the tears that I've had because of the proudness and the how I am. I'm just so every time these guys talk and it's not just the three that's here. It's my entire team. When they talk about teamwork and patients first, you know, they really exude our core values. And that's the thing that is biggest with us here at Oshner is our five core values, teamwork, patients first, excellence, integrity and um, patient, I think I said patients first, I missed one, um, a compassion. But those are the things that we look forward, forward to in any employee that's gonna come to Oshner. I mean, the three that are on this panel right now exude every bit of all, three, all five of those core values. Um, when uh, RT comes to work with us, new grad, experienced grad, or experienced RT, it doesn't matter. You have to have an amazing work ethic. Um, this, this facility is big. It offers a lot of patient experience. It offers any patient population that you could possibly get your hands on. Um, and you've got to be, you have to be compassionate to patients. And if you don't put patients first at Oshner, then sometimes you just don't, this is, might not be the right place for you. I mean, these three individuals are clearly, clearly the true core values of Oshner. Um, and so if, if you come in with a work ethic and you want to be, you want to exude ex excellence and you want to be compassionate to patients and you want to take care of your patients before you sit down, um, you want to make sure that they get to go home in a timely fashion. 
if you want to be compassionate to their family members, those are the types of employees that we need here at Oshner. And that's not just for our campus, that's for all campuses of Oshner. We are equally and solely equal when it comes to our core values. Um, but it's, you know, it, it's really important that when we think about excellence, we think about our credentials. These three RTs right here, they, they are looking forward to getting their higher credentials. You know, that's a drive that you can't teach someone. So with employees like that, the more employees you have with that type of work ethic and that drive for excellence and that drive for compassion, you just get better and better and better quality. And quality is the one thing that we drive our success on in healthcare. It doesn't matter what hospital you're working at. But if you have happy, happy RTs and RTs that match the core values in the facility in which you work, then you're gonna have the best quality for patient care that you can find. I hope that answered the question. But I was a little derailed when I had a tear or two. <laughs> no, I I can I've seen it uh that before. So I absolutely understand what in these stories. So again, thanks for sharing. And Jackie, that absolutely answered the question for that part. But I did kind of want to follow up again. And like I was saying, thank you for sharing all that. But what are maybe if someone that's getting ready to apply, what some advice or insight you'd like to share with them? Yeah, so anyone that wants to apply, even if you're a new grad, so this is a new grad on, if you want to apply to the Oshner, to Oshner Health or Oshner Main Campus, Go ahead and apply now. Um, even if you can't get here in three to six months, if you're interested, apply. If you're a new grad and you're three to six months out from graduating, you can still apply and we can hold a position for you. We're happy to do so. So in my thoughts, if you're a new grad and you want to get that part over with, so prior to taking your test, apply to the position. We can accept you if we feel like you're a good candidate for our team. And then once that's done, you're done. Go finish your program, take your test, relax, and we will wait for you to take that test, test and pass it. Pass that registry because it's hard to get after that. But make sure that you do it in advance so that you can get all of that stress level off of you. The next hardest piece for, uh, I think for anybody coming into Louisiana, and right now, especially in our times, the way things are going, is the license. Make sure you begin that application early. Even if you remotely think that you wanna get a Louisiana license, go ahead and start that process. It doesn't take anything to start it, just download the information, and that way you can start gathering the things that you need. Um, the interview process for us is relatively easy. So you would connect with the recruiter, the recruiter will call you and you'll set up a Zoom, a Zoom interview, and you'll get to talk to a, uh, one of our two, two or three team members during that Zoom, and then from that point is when we kind of decide if um, you're a good candidate for us. Um, but if you're a new grad and you want to learn, this is definitely the place to do that. Um, as a new RT 30 years ago, I started out of a small facility. I had no idea what I was missing until I went to a larger facility. Once you get that first couple of years down and you get that strong muscle of critical thinking and assessment, then you can go to a smaller facility and, and take on a smaller facility. But Oshner will offer you everything you need. We'd have a lot of transfer opportunities after the first year or two. So if you wanna to go to work in the flight care, if you wanna work, work at ECMO, um, we have a lot of advancements that goes on here at Oshner Health, um, which is something that not a lot of places are offering. Um, even if you, know, you wanted to do something a little bit different than respiratory, Oshner offers that and we, as a leadership team, we, we pride ourselves and we, our, our success is built on your success. So if, if you wanna go to philanth the philanthropy or basket weaving, I will help you find a position in Oshner to basket weave. If that's what you love to do, let's do it. But let's start here and give us the opportunity to help you grow. Um, I'm really proud to say that we've been able to advance a lot of our RTs into different sectors of the hospital, like performance improvement, infection control, and things like that. Not a lot of hospitals and uh, systems are able to offer that. But as Oshner, that's what we pride ourselves in, is building our teams to the maximum of their ability. Great, Jackie. Thank you so much for that. And, and absolutely, I know that with the addition of our new career center, uh, our internal career center, that is also a testament that our employees, the goal of Oshner Health is to increase, you know, value our employees and increase their potential and maximize what they want to do. 
Uh, so thank you for sharing that insight. That was great. And to everybody that participated in the discussion today, thank you so much for your personal insight and your advice to those that may be considering Auctioner Health. Those of you in the, uh, in the attendees that are watching today, thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, if you're looking for more information or looking for just more general auctioner information, the best place to find that is going to be our website, which is auctioner.org. And if you're ready to go ahead and apply or want to take a look at some of the open positions with Auctioner Health, very simply is going to be auctioner.org forward slash careers. Uh, and if there's any other questions, please feel free to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and reaching out to us that way. Uh, we have our representatives that are ready to answer questions from that. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us for our respiratory therapy talent talk. Uh, my name is Dave Trepanier from Offshore Health uh, Career Outreach Team, and thank you for joining us.